I want to know what you think about using loud splashes of color on your furniture pieces when you're decorating your space. I'm about to use a bright, punchy color to turn this boring, thrifted table into a bold statement piece. Let's get started. Painting a table like this is a great way to add a splash of color and personality to any space. I picked up this battered table at a thrift store a few months ago, tucked it away, and actually forgot all about it. I'm a bit of a neutral Nelly myself, but I've decided that this is the day this table is getting a bold makeover that's gonna make sure it never gets forgotten again. At first glance, this table looks like solid wood, and it is mostly solid, but the knotty pine panel on the top and on the sides are actually just a veneer over some particle board. The first thing that alerted me to that was this bubbled up spot. It looks like someone left something wet on here long enough for the moisture to absorb through the wood veneer and down into the substrate, which caused it to swell. There's not really a great way that I know of to fix this other than to go to the hassle of smoothing it out and applying a new piece of veneer over top or smoothing it out and using some paint to hide it. Since it's been lost in the garage for a few months, it is super dirty, and the first step for all of my painted projects is a good wash up. Furniture surfaces are always so much dirtier than you could ever guess, but when you're planning to paint, you need to make extra sure that your surface is clean and free from anything that might resist the paint, like oils or waxes from old furniture polishes. The knobs on here are held on with two screws and I think the size and shape of them is perfect for these drawers. So I'm gonna be keeping them, but I do wanna take them off so that I can properly clean and paint underneath them. You would not believe how much yuck manages to get collected behind knobs and pulls. Once everything was nice and dry, I started working on this swollen spot. I put some coarse 80 grit sandpaper on my sander and used it to remove as much of the material as I needed to, to get the spot flush with the rest of the veneer around it. Here's a better look at how thin this veneer is and what it's sitting on top of. This is also what us refinishers mean when you hear us say burn through or burning through the veneer. Usually you want to avoid sanding through the wood layer, but in this case, that's what I'm trying to do so that I can make all this flat again. This is what I was left with by the time I had things feeling smooth again. So now I need to fill in this gritty porous spot and seal it up so that it doesn't keep pulling in moisture. I like to do repairs like this with a two-part epoxy style filler. These three are all really just the same stuff by different brands, so any of them will work. They come in a base putty with a separate tube of hardener that has to be mixed together to create a chemical reaction that cures it. These types of fillers start to stiffen up really quickly after they're mixed together, so it's usually helpful to mix up multiple smaller batches instead of a big amount, and you have to move pretty quickly with it. They're also very stinky, so make sure that you're wearing a respirator and working in a well-ventilated area. While the filler was setting up, I went on to sanding the rest of the table. I used a foam sanding pad on all the curved areas so that I didn't grind anything flat with my sander and worked out as many of the scratches and dents as I could. It's not really necessary to sand all the way through the old finish unless it's flaking off or the scratches go all the way down to the wood underneath, but a light scuff sanding of the original finish will always help your paint stick a little bit better than not sanding at all. By the time I was finished with the rest of the table, the Bondo was nice and hard, so I sanded that all smooth as well. Yeah. 
You can see here that some of the particle board spot is visible again, but that's okay because the epoxy is now holding all of that together. It's sealed over and it feels smooth. And I also took two minutes to clean up the green goop from the drawer bottom before I put my sander away. I used a microfiber cloth to pick up any sanding dust from the table and then put a piece of painter's tape on the inside of the hardware holes and masked off the drawers. Because of the knotty pine on this table, even though it's just a thin veneer, I know I'm going to have some spots where the tannins in the wood are going to want to bleed up through my paint. So I need to seal everything up in kind of a candy coating of this shellac base primer. I flipped the table upside down so that I could get around the legs a little bit easier. I shook the heck out of this spray can and then applied a pretty generous coat. And after about 15 minutes, it was dry enough for me to flip the table over again and get at the top. This is about 30 minutes after spraying the top and this is the bleed through that I was worried about. These spots will just keep popping through whatever's on top of them, no matter how much paint or top coat you use. So you really have to seal them up with shellac. Unfortunately, the spray can that I had didn't go as far as I'd hoped. So I ended up needing to roll on a second coat of primer from a quart size can that I had. Nothing was popping through my second coat of primer, so I felt safe moving on at this point. I went over the whole table with some 400 grit sandpaper to knock back any rough wood fibers that were left behind from my sanding beforehand. I also found a few little sags on the side here and I smoothed those down too. Okay, now we get to the fun part. I'm gonna paint this table in this brilliant park bench green by Fusion Mineral Paint. It literally is a park bench, grass green, quirky splash of color. I'm gonna be spraying this using my gravity fed HVLP pneumatic gun to get a clean, really smooth finish. But if spraying isn't your thing or you don't have the space or equipment to do it, you can absolutely get a great finish with a good brush or a roller too. Because I didn't wanna risk any little paint boogers or sometimes you can get clumps of pigment that collect together, I poured about half of this pint through a paper paint strainer and added about a tablespoon of water to thin it down just the tiniest bit. Spraying definitely does use more paint than brushing, but this half pint is gonna be more than enough to do three coats on this table. I flipped the table upside down again so that it was easy to get around those legs and sprayed on my first coat. Since it's winter and I have my space heater running in the corner of the garage, I propped up my box fan on the other side of the room just to help move the warm air around and I left this to dry for about two hours. Yeah. 
after getting the table right way up again, I had these marks from the little roller things that I had the table on. So I wiped those smooth with my 400 grit sandpaper again, and then I was ready to paint the top. I sprayed on another two coats, again, waiting the same two-ish hours in between with the fan on it. Fusion is an acrylic resin paint that has a built-in non-porous top coat, and it's even waterproof and UV resistant once it's fully cured. So technically it doesn't need anything additional over top, but because this is a tabletop that will probably see a lot of traffic, I am going to add some extra protection with a water-based polyurethane. It's also going to add a little bit more of a sheen since Fusion is, I'd say it's just above a matte sheen on its own. So once my last coat of color was nice and dry, I washed out my spray gun and then I really thoroughly mixed my can of poly to make sure that all of the components in here were evenly incorporated. Then again, I strained that into my gun and sprayed on two coats. This is a lot thinner than the paint, so I always adjust the flow settings on my gun back so there's not as much product coming out, but it does mist a lot, and the top coat definitely fills up the garage air for a little bit and does look quite terrifying reflecting in the sunlight like this. Now all that's left to do is pop the drawers back in and dress this thing up. I decided to go ahead and paint the knobs the same as the rest of the table for a monochromatic moment. I'm sure a lot of you watching will have a different preference than that, but this is my preference on my table, so that's okay. I think this table is the perfect piece for a funky maximalist space or even a grand millennial style interior mixing old school lines with loud bright colors. Let me know your thoughts on this one. The good, the bad, and the ugly down in the comment section. I'm so curious to know how many of you would add a piece like this to your own home decor. Thank you so much for watching today. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button for tons more furniture makeover ideas. I appreciate each and every one of you and I will catch you all next time. <music>